It was a strange weekend because I've basically grown up on Sky's coverage since 2012. There was a lot more public scrutiny. I'd already seen a lot of messages on social media absolutely slating me. The next stage will just be, you know, trying to work out a balance with Martin, which I don't think will be difficult at all. He's a consummate professional and you have to build up that confidence. So I've got, I think I've got that confidence. The team were all so welcoming and so lovely. You know, I said it on, on social media. I was, I was nervous the whole weekend. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an open and honest book. It was very, I was, it was a strange weekend because I've basically grown up on Sky's coverage since 2012. So to then suddenly be in the production meeting with Natalie Pinkham and sat next to Damon Hill and Karun Chandok and, and Rachel Brooks and, and whoever else it might be. I just, it was, I had to very quickly park that and go, right, well, I'm one of the team. I've got a job to do. We've all got jobs to do. We've all got to be professional. Mm. And Obviously, I was aware that there was suddenly a lot more eyes on me. There was a lot more public scrutiny. I'd already seen a lot of messages on social media absolutely slating me. I'd also seen a lot of messages about, oh, why wasn't it this guy instead? Or who the hell is this guy? And, you know, it, it, it's quite funny. It doesn't affect me too much. But I was just like, oh, God, I haven't even done anything yet. And, then, and it's already coming in. But so, of course, of I was, was nervous. Very... A lot of it was very positive, though, as well. I mean, you know, because we know each other so well, I was um, I was literally typing your name into Twitter, refreshing every five <laughs> seconds to see what people were saying. But there was a great deal of positivity around it. I just want to go back to that that point you made at, at the start of a race when you've said your line, it set you up for whatever it is that's coming next. What do you see when you're in the commentary box in terms of your visual cues? Because for me, watching at home, I see a load of cars all flooding towards the first corner. And it's really hard to look at what's going on at the front, the middle, the back, all as quickly as you possibly can and figure out from a distance which car has hit another one or, you know, try and see the driver helmet to understand who's doing what. What cues do you get in the commentary booth to help to support you? Because you're so quickly jumping from one part part of the grid to the other. And, and if there is contact at the beginning, as we know with Crofty, you know, he's, I think Crofty's great and it's a very hard job. But if he gets the odd thing wrong, uh, social media is straight into it. But it must be really hard to see what's actually going on. Or do you have like loads of visual aids and people talking in your ear, helping you out along that, that journey? There's a bit of that. But on lap one, it, it, it's, it's difficult. You, I try and memorize the grid. So I roughly know that, okay, well, that Red Bull started way in front of the other one. So so it's probably going to be Perez that's in the incident, not Verstappen. So that that sort of stuff helps as long as I, if I know the grid exactly how it is without having to look hard at the, at the screens. I get, we get the same screen as you guys will at home. Exactly the same. The I, I as as a lead commentator, I I will tend to say to whoever's my co-commentator, look, for the start of the race, I tend to kind of focus on the top five cars. If you can just keep an eye on what's going on behind, that would be great. So then we've got both both sides covered. And then we have timing screens, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, about seven different screens, which with all different things on it. A driver tracker, but on lap one, that can be a bit haywire. We have we have a a, a, a tire tracker as well, which is quite handy. And also suddenly you can see if a car drops all the way to the bottom, well, it's most likely that car is the one that's going to be involved in the incident. So a quick glance to see has anything happened there, but it's all, it's all split second. It's all out of the corner of your eye. It's all, oh, it could be, I think it might be Joe Guan Yu. The second Sauber is slow, that, that kind of thing. It, it is a bit fly at the, you know, fly on the seat of your pants, but also, it's it's informed because you know where everyone is starting. You have got a, a driver tracker and a, a, the timing screen in front of you, so you can see when cars fall down the order. You just hope it's not a transponder issue, that kind of thing. So, but you're never going to be able to get it a hundred percent. And when you are watching the TV at home without any of the pressures on you, you can, of course, you can see more in the commentary box. One that I could barely stand up in either. I, you, you, you see all of that. You, you've got, but I think I had about one, I think I've had about four or five people in my ear talking as well. So you have your, your main director, your producer, 
Sky have a person on race control, which is really useful because they're watching all the onboards and listening to all the team radios. So they'll be able to help you out as well with what's going on. That's why we can say we're hearing George Russell is struggling with his tyres. That might not have been played out on the broadcast, but race control at Sky has somebody listening to all of the different team radios. So they'll feed that into your ear. But sometimes they don't get it right either. And then you say it and you and then you look like you're an idiot. So that's the risk. So it, it, that's the, but that's live TV. So that, that's a, hopefully a little insight into how we kind of call it. But also it, it's it is it's not always going to be 100 percent. Harry, which is more difficult when there's loads going on like that, all that chaos in the first lap or you were with um, BBC Five Live in Monaco like for the last race and there wasn't much going on between the, the first lap and the last lap. How do you feel yeah. the time if there's a red flag or whatever? Yeah, that's that's when you earn your, your money, I would say. Five Live is a very different kind of commentary, which was also another thing I had to really get my head around for Sky. Five Live were not driven by the pictures for a start. Obviously, in the race, you are and you've got to tell the story. But equally, it, it's a bit more... It's a bit more casual in a way because also we're on the BBC main station and not everybody is going to be a Formula One nerd. So we're constantly kind of rebuilding the picture of the race. You know, I'm telling people it's 25 points for the win all the way down to one point for 10. That's how the point system works. You know, there's a bit of mismatching in there. So there's you can sort of fill the time by just sort of rebuilding the picture for people. But equally, you know, in Monaco, I think it was myself, Mark Priestley. We had Andrew Benson, who's the BBC's F1 correspondent. And we would talk about is the is the tire rule where you can change under uh, any tire under a red flag for free is that okay is that right we'll talk about the magnuson penalty we'll go a little bit more in depth on that we will try and get an interview with somebody on the ground with jenny gow and and it is i have so many things that i can talk about because i've got stats on monaco as a place i've got i know about the the house of grimaldi which has ruled monaco for over 600 years or we can have a chat about that or whatever and that is when you you, you start to kind of just go right we all love formula one here let's just have a chat about it as if we're as if we're at the pub you know there's no racing on at the moment we obviously keep people up to date with what's going on but that's how i generally see a red flag it just becomes a, a general chinwag about formula one slightly led by what we're seeing and what's happening on on the track and, and around it at the time and you've you've got um two more races coming up with sky um the next one is with brundle right so yeah that's going to be a hell of an experience because you know I, with no disrespect, disrespect to Karun, um you know martin brundle is an absolute legend of the sport and is you know yeah sort of british broadcasting royalty how are you feeling going into that what's your your plan of attack for for appearing alongside martin i find it absolutely ridiculous that i'm commentating alongside <laughs> martin brundle absolutely lo- the fact that he even in he even knows who i am is absolutely stupid i, I saw him last weekend and he, uh, he's so, he was so lovely you know had a wanted to come came over had a chat with me um and and sent you know sent some nice messages through during imola which was really lovely so but yeah, it, I don't have a plan of attack. I'm I, now I've done one. I've got my head around how how the sky operation works. So I have no. I the next stage will just be you know trying to work out a balance with Martin, which I don't think will be difficult at all. He's a consummate professional, and I'm and I'm a consummate professional as well. So we'll, we both enjoy Formula One. We'll both be calling the action, and and he you know I'm I'm no. Um, diva i don't have any kind of qualms about who says what who does what i'm here to learn and <laughs> who better to learn from them than martin brundle so i'm looking forward to it and um i'll be going into the weekend with a lot more confidence i think in myself because it's so easy to doubt everything and anything when you're suddenly put in that position and you're alongside these guys that have done decades of formula one and suddenly you're thinking i don't know anything about formula one i don't know anything but you do and you have to build up that confidence. So I've got, I think I've got that confidence. The team were all so welcoming and so lovely. And it's a sprint weekend as well in Austria. So there's none of these practice yes, sessions to have to get, get through. So one practice and then we're in it. So I quite like that from, from a broadcasting perspective. I, I enjoy that. 